Hey, Mr. GK here. All right, Mr. 396 Easy Money. Get your uh, DX500 here. Another uh, Texas Star back uh, 10 8. Another Texas Star back up and rolling so you can uh, drop a couple of hammers out there on a couple of ducks' heads um, or whatever you wish to do with it. <laughs> but, uh, Mr. Easy Money sent this out to me and uh, didn't have any transistors in it. He uh, basically said he wanted me to re repill it with HGs, uh, check the amp out for issues, power wire upgrade if I think it needs it. Shoot, man. They always need that. <laughs> and just do my thing, he said. Well, I did my thing. I didn't get too nuts with it, but I did do my thing. Just to go through this really quick, here's your parts that came out of it. All right, so we got the power wire. Full power wire upgrade for you. Full power wire upgrade all the way to the back of the transformers. It's 14 gauge, wrapped around a very high permeability uh, ferrite, which is giving you almost triple the amount. of ripple effect or shall I say anti-ripple effect than these were giving you so you got a little bit more inductive uh, measurement on those uh, on those ferrite beads so you got a better chance to keep that RF from going back down your DC line you know you can't stop all of it you know you'd have to have some crazy filter network to do something like that but you want to get it down to an acceptable level so anyway, um, so I just basically went through here, man, and replaced uh, uh, some of the uh, burnt things, etc. Put your four new feedback circuits on here. I had to make them up for you. I don't have any more in stock, so I had to actually put them together for you. Got your four HGs dropped in there. Got your four new 10 ohms uh, dropped in there. Put your uh, two filter caps on each two-pill board. 1,000 microfarad filter caps uh, another thing I went ahead and did for you bud which is something I've actually been wanting to do for a while and just hadn't got around to it this is now my first Texas star that has a regulated bias circuit in it that's what you see that right here this right here is a big chunk of aluminum basically I just made a heat sink for the regulator since there's no fans blowing in here this made me feel better so now we've got a regulator on this, so the bias circuit has a regulated voltage going to it. So no matter where I turn the voltage at, the bias circuit is going to stay the same. Okay, so I could take this up on 16 volts if I wanted to, and it's not going to affect the bias circuit now. Now I do have a little bit more sophisticated bias circuit in mind, a regulated bias circuit in mind, which will require a pass transistor along with the regulator which I'm thinking about putting right here for 500s and that pretty much will allow you to run Texas stars on a little bit higher voltage and it does not affect the bias at all the bias stays the same and that's one of the biggest problems why Texas stars are voltage sensitive well anyway um Let's, let's see here. I went ahead and uh, matched four uh, 300, 330 puff caps from Collector of the Ground. Those are those caps right there. There were uh, these four had the, the four that was on there had took a little bit of a hit. They, they were nowhere near matching each other at least. So I went ahead and matched you up four of them drop them in for you um sorry I have my celebration sig <laughs> if you see any smoke it's not not the amp and I cleaned this thing up for you a bit man we got 243 beads on the power wire too just give a little bit of extra inductive uh, work there on the power wires a little bit better in induction 
if you want to say it that way. <laughs> um, let's see here. Other than that, man, I didn't have to do nothing, you know, dramatic. I saw the opportunity to do that bias circuit for you, so I went ahead and did that. And I've got your Anderson SB120. These connectors right here are designed for up to 120 amps. You don't see these a lot out there, people using them. And honestly, you can sometimes get the bigger ones even cheaper than these, but... And here's the uh, set that I'll be sending to you. And I went ahead and made me an adapter too, which I've been needing to do. I've got quite a few of these connectors, and it's the first time me actually using them. So I went ahead and made me an adapter as well, so I can hook up to the uh, whenever I use another one. So all right, man. So we got this thing all sewed up for you, man. Um, the only thing I did do is I added a little bit of capacitance to the input. A splitter okay the, the reflect look fine but you know we are going from whatever was in here to HG's so sometimes there can be a little fluctuation I only had to add about 25 30 more pico fared so the input splitter has uh, just a little bit more capacitance you can pretty much say it's got about the same capacitance as if this was a 667 because uh, you add a little bit more on that because you've got the driver's output right there with it they pretty much share in a tuning capacitor so let's take a look at it just got it hooked up to the servo supply here we we're on 15 volts I got the 500 watt slug in just so I can show you this is a Texas Star 500. You're supposed to be able to take about a 4 watt radio. And you're supposed to be able to get about 500 peak watts. So let's see if we're getting 500 peak watts. I got the peak kit turned on. 500 watt slugs. So we're looking at the middle scale. Okay. So go ahead and turn on the box. Oh. 500 watts PEP. We should be getting about 150 bird. Let's take a look at the RMS bird. Oh yeah, yep, right there about 150 bird. Oh yeah. And here's your input tune. This is a five watt slug in reverse. This is your input reflect. Oh yeah, oh yeah. See, it was about. It was about. Uh, two notches above that before I tuned it which I really didn't have to tune it tune it up a little but I went ahead and did anyway because when you're reading this 5 watt slug so a lot, sometimes I'll use a 10 watt slug but this little notch normally on the 10 watt slug which would be a watt on the 5 watt slug it's a half a watt so in between that first notch and here is a quarter of a watt so you've got less than a quarter of a watt input reflect I guess you'd call that a dang microwatt. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. Alright, man. So, uh, what we're going to do now is I'm just going to move up on the radios. Okay. So, I'm going to move up on the uh, Cobra 29 uh, Stickman Tune. I don't think I'm even going to hook up a driver. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to hook up on the bigger power supply, though because once I hit this with this next radius, a little bit too much for the old servo supply over there. So I'm going to hit pause, hook up Stickman uh, Cobra 29. We're going to give it double the amount of RMS drive. Alright, brother, I'm on the uh, unregulated supply on the medium tap. So uh, I don't, don't even have it hooked up to the uh, high tap yet. So it's floating at 18 volts. It's going to drop down... Go 14 not 7 volts so we're actually a little, the voltage is actually a little lower than where we uh, were at on the other supply but I was just going to key it real quick on the medium tap this is peak by the way Go. it's about 700 watts it's kind of a little bit of peak let's take a look at the RMS
Load. Load. A little over 200 and what? About 250 bird or so. Keep in mind, I'm just hitting it with the radio. Okay, so we're not even hitting this with the driver. If I was hitting it with the driver right now, it'd be really, really getting up there. All right. Well, I don't know what happened, but I went to turn my D-Rail radio on and started smoking out the back. So <laughs> I don't know what that's. That's the first radio I've had smoke on me like that. In quite a few years, I don't, I don't know what happened. I think uh, I can't wait to see what happened. I literally just hooked the uh, D rail radio up, turned it on. I keyed it once. I always do a test key just to make sure the RS flowing through everything fine. Because I'm a paranoid guy, and uh, I, I saw that it wasn't moving the watt meter. And uh, smoke started rolling out the back, so I'm gonna have to get that sent up the D rail. I know he'll take care of me and figure out what's wrong. So, just because of that, I was just gonna hook up the D rail radio. Because of that, man, I went, and hooked, went ahead and hooked up the old one pill driver just so you can see what it's doing with the one pill driver hitting it. You, you can run this if you want to, like this. Me personally, I like running Texas Star 500s with radios. That's just my my style you know they are high drive but that's just my personal style but i i still got it on the medium tap okay i still got it on the medium tap she's gonna be dropping in the 13 point something volts i don't even have it on the high tap right now all right thousand watt slug still Good. right there at 400 bird oh Oh, sorry, this thing is hitting my dang shoulder. I need to take this thing off. God dang it, it's on my nerves. Spring broke on it and it won't stay up. I don't need it right here anyway. I can wear a headlamp now. All right, let's see what it's doing peak wise. PEP. -E oh, right there, close to it looks like eight nine hundred watt. I couldn't see it right here from this angle. Oh, she's drop, dropping the 13.6. All right, I'm going to flip it up on the high tap, and we'll just do a quick key. I don't like to run them HGs on high filters. Get the hell the kick out of my way. Dang it. Sorry about that. That thing has got on my umpteenth last nerve. I think tomorrow I just need to remove it. It has... It has had its last life here on my bench because I'm tired of having it in my way. Alright, I got it on the high tap. We're going to do a quick key on our MS. We're putting about 40 bird into the box. See, I was just going to put 16 bird into it. Oh, so that's getting close to about 500 bird. PEP. Oh, there's your thousand watts, and I looked over there, and it was on 15.4 volts. All right, big brother, we got her working, and also I had to put a new connector on my driver just then because I noticed that the uh, one of the wires had fell out of it. And heck, I put that dang connector on that thing, I put that Anderson connector that was on there just now in the dang trash. Some off-brand connector. I had to, <laughs> I had to pry that thing off. No, nah, that's an Anderson. That's an Anderson. But anyway, I put that on there when I built the thing. And this is my first amp I ever built. The old epoxy one pill. I got a new top on there, as y'all can see. Not a new one, but another one. Uh, a guy came by here and had a this style case, and he wanted a fan put on top. So she, I was like, well, heck, I already got a top with a hole in it already. Let's just sw uh, swap, and I'll put a fan on there for you so I can put that top on there. All right. She's rocking and rolling, brother. Run her at about five, 600 watts. She should last you from here to kingdom comes, hopefully.
but you know how it is. You can run them higher, you know, high as you want, but it don't always mean it's gonna last forever. Thanks for hanging in there with me, Mr. Big E. Three nine six. Out of the, oh, there's no address on here. I was about to say out of the something area. I can't remember where you live at. <laughs> but uh, thanks for hanging in there with me, bud. Hope you enjoy. Old gatekeeper said it. We're gone. Bye-bye.